many of these drugs cause photosensitivity. And what is photosensitivity? That means it increases the potential risk that your skin will be damaged by the sun. And so if you look at this list, and I took these, this list was published uh, pretty recently in, in a major review paper uh, published in the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venerology. And so what, what they found was more than 300 different kinds of medications. What I've done here is I've just summarized some of the more common ones, but I wanna just kind of highlight you know, this research study down here for those of you who, you know, who want to go back and, and look more. So like if you want to see if any of your medicines can cause photosensitivity, again, increasing the risk of you getting a sunburn, um, you want to know about this because if you're incre trying to increase your sun exposure and you're on some of these drugs, first, it's smart that you know about that. But second, it's also intelligent that you would talk to your doctor about why you're on these medicines because um, many would argue if these medicines are actually necessary in many cases and that if, if you, let's, let's, let's use some examples. So triamterine, which is a diuretic, furosemide, which is also a diuretic, Enalapril, lisinopril, valsartan, losartan, elmosartan, telmosartan, ibersartan, um, carvediol. These are all medications kind of in the classification of the fact that they treat um, blood pressure. So if you've got high blood pressure. Now I just showed you that avoidance of sun and, and not getting adequate sun can actually increase your blood pressure and that being in the sun actually can reduce your diastolic blood pressure. So how many of you have a desk job where you go to work all day long and you're not outside and you're not getting sun exposure and you have high blood pressure and maybe you eat not so great and you're on one of these kinds of medications. Okay, now these medications can increase your risk for photosensitivity. These medications can also cause nutritional deficiency. So you've, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know, you've heard me talk about this, this term drug-induced nutritional deficiency. And so if we look at, at many of these medications, what do they deplete? They deplete B vitamins, some of them deplete vitamin D. Now, now keep this in the back of your mind because we're gonna talk about how important B vitamins and vitamin D are in terms of being protective for you to be able to be out in the sun. But, Again, these very drugs that are commonly used to treat common conditions cause nutritional deficits. Those very nutritional deficits can make it easier for you to burn and can create other types of issues where you want to have sun avoidance types of behaviors, but can also contribute to the very diseases that the doctor's trying to treat by using the medication in the first place. We see the same thing here in this list, and that is um, these, a lot of these medications are predominantly prescribed for pain. And, um, and so again, you know, some of these common, very, very common medications, if you're taking them for pain, can not only can they increase your risk of being burnt by sunlight should you be out in the sun, but can cause micronutrient deficiencies like vitamin D and folate and iron deficiency and vitamin C deficiency. And so, Again, those deficiencies can lead to the very problems that the drugs are intending to treat. And then we have other classes of meds like antibiotics, ciprofloxacin, and then going down this list here, these are antibiotics. And then we, we go through all of these other meds. There's a bunch of them here that are antidepressants. And then there are several here that are for cholesterol reduction. We've got anti-inflammatory hydrocortisone. We've got, these are um, antihistamines. And we even have estrogen and gout medication, allopurinol. Um, we've got, you know, this medication, which is an antacid. So an acid blocker. We've got the diabetic medication, metformin. So, I mean, again, this is a list of, of very, very commonly prescribed drugs that can increase your risk of being burned by the sun should you be out in the sun. So the very 
you know, the very diseases that sunlight could help to prevent should you get it, you're, you're going to your doctor, your doctor's saying, avoid the sun, yet take this medication, and so now you're setting yourself up for sun failure because even if you were try to go in the sun, you run this potential risk of increased levels of photosensitivity. Now I say that just to educate you to say, I still think you should get sun, but you have to be cautious and you have to be careful if you're using certain medications because it can create a problem for you as well. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Now, okay, so let's, let's move into why you want to get UV, why you want to get sunshine as a general rule of thumb and the, de you know, the details of it. So obviously we know that sunshine helps to make vitamin D. Uh, that is probably the thing that most people are familiar with is that you know, when your skin, especially when UV light hits your skin, there's a type of cholesterol in your skin that produces vitamin D. And of course, vitamin D deficiencies are linked to high blood pressure and autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis and, di and uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, and even in, in cases of celiac disease and thyroid disease, we know that vitamin D deficiency uh, increases the risk for metabolic syndrome. Again, these very diseases that we set out in the beginning and said that if you don't get adequate sunshine, you have an increased risk for the development of these things. And of course, vitamin D is one of the reasons why. It's one of the benefits of being exposed to specifically to UV light. Again, most doctors will tell you that it's the UV light that causes the sun burning, and that's the part of the sunlight that you should really be um, focused on trying to avoid. That's why most sunscreens are basically, they're designed to block out UV. Um, as opposed to other aspects of sunshine. So again, we want that UV for that vitamin D, but there are a lot of other benefits to UV light beyond the vitamin D production component. And one is that um, UV light is actually used in medicine, interestingly enough, to treat a variety of different skin conditions. We'll talk about that in a minute, but UV light also helps regulate the microbiome on your skin as a disinfectant. Uh, UV light sti uh, stimulates the production of the pigment melanin in your skin, which helps generate a natural sunscreen for you. So the more sunlight exposure that you get, the more resilient you become to more sunlight exposure. So again, when you're new to sunlight, let's say you're, you've been hiding away in a dark closet for years, you don't want to just go out and lie out on a beach for five hours without any protection. You want to start at a low dose and allow this benefit to kick in. So a few minutes each day, you're gonna start producing some of your own natural melanin pigment, and so then your skin is gonna become better and better at protecting you from potential sun burning. But we also now know that UV light helps to generate nitric oxide. Now one of the interesting things about nitric oxide is it won a Nobel Prize, and one of the reasons why is it's a very, very critical um, chemical that helps to regulate blood pressure. Nitric oxide vasodilates your blood vessels and so it's also linked, a deficiency of nitric oxide is also linked to hypertension or high blood pressure. We know that UV light when it hits the skin helps to release endorphins and this is why many people over those long winters when they're inside and they get cabin fever or seasonal affective disorder, they're sad. Right, and part of that has to do with the endorphins that we can produce when we're exposed to UV light. We also know that UV light can actually reduce skin inflammation. So these are actual bona fide benefits to UV light. I wanna talk a little bit more in depth and show you some of the research in this particular area. And so what you, you can see here, the role of vitamin D in primary headache from potential mechanism to treatment. Um, this is an interesting study because they were taking patients that were suffering from migraine headache. And of course, one of the symptoms of migraine headaches is photophobia, which is a, a sensitivity to bright lights here. And so what they found is a higher incidence of 
allodynia, uh, phonophobia, sound sensitivity, light sensitivity, autonomic manifestations and resistance to medications in migraineurs with vitamin D deficiency compared to those with normal vitamin D levels. Well, how do you get vitamin D? Well, you get vitamin D through the sunshine. So again, if you're a migraine sufferer and you're avoiding the sun, um, we see resistance to medications in those types of individuals as well as increased symptoms in those that have that vitamin D deficiency. So again, we need that UV light to produce that vitamin D. Now we also have beneficial effects of UV radiation other than via vitamin D production. So again, I was telling you there are non-vitamin D benefits to this. Most of the positive effects of solar radiation are mediated via ultraviolet B or UVB induced production of vitamin D in the skin. However, several other pathways exist for the action of ultraviolet radiation on humans as focused on in this review. Skin diseases like psoriasis, vitiligo, atopic dermatitis, localized scleroderma can be treated with solar radiation aka heliotherapy or artificial UV radiation, aka phototherapy. UV exposure can suppress the clinical symptoms of multiple sclerosis independently of vitamin D synthesis. Furthermore, UV generates nitric oxide, as I mentioned a moment ago, which may reduce blood pressure and generally improve cardiovascular health. UVA-induced nitric oxide may also have antimicrobial effects and furthermore act as a neurotransmitter. Finally, UV exposure may improve mood through the release of endorphins. So again, as I was talking about all these different benefits of UV light specifically that were not even linked to the vitamin D component. So these other benefits, these non-vitamin D benefits of UV light exposure. So. A lot of people will say, I'm not gonna get in the sun, I'm just gonna take my vitamin D supplementation and I'm gonna, that will be my sunshine in a bottle. And so again, you're not gonna get all these other benefits that we're talking about here if you avoid sunlight and avoid that sun exposure.